Hey, this is Kaya, the Colorado Property Chick, and of course, the person you go to for all your real estate needs. Are you thinking about moving to Colorado? How about Parker, Colorado? If you're looking for a small town feel, but yet you still want the amenities of a larger city, I think Parker, Colorado may be worth checking out. In this video, I'm going to go over the pros and cons, show current statistics, subdivision price points, maps, photos, drone, and neighborhood videos. This video is going to have most of what you need to determine if Parker, Colorado is a great fit for you. I love helping people make informed decisions about the real estate needs. Real estate is what I do for a living. Please consider me when evaluating your real estate options. My contact information is in the show descriptions. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any new content. Now, let's talk about what makes Parker a great place to live. Of course, like any location, Parker has its pros and cons. The pros are location, mixture of urban and small town feel, a lot of town events and activities, great neighborhoods and affordable housing for the Denver area, and great public schools. The cons are population growth and new developments, traffic, snowy icy roads for commuters, little diversity, and overall cost of living. The mixture of urban and small town feel makes Parker, Colorado a great place to live. I think many people are drawn to Parker because they want that small town feel with that family friendly atmosphere, but they also want the amenities of a larger city. Parker covers 22.4 square miles and has a population of around 63,000 and growing. It is large enough to have most of what people want and need, but small enough for one to still recognize faces when out and about. Parker has a great suburban location. It is located 25 miles south of Denver. This is just far enough to allow for that small town feel, but still close enough to enjoy the benefits of a larger city. Centennial is about eight miles and has a Centennial Airport and is home to the Broncos training camp. So yes, there are a few Bronco players that live in the Parker area. The Denver International Airport is around 26 miles away. So you can easily jump on the I-470 and bypass all the Denver traffic no matter the time of day. 14 miles to the Denver Tech Center, 10 miles to Castle Pines, which has great outlet malls, and eight miles to Lone Tree, which has Park Meadows Mall and Sky Ridge Medical Center. There is a negative, however. If you are a commuter, you can hit snowy, icy roads, which can cause for more traffic, longer commute times, and more road hazards. One thing about Parker that makes it stand out is its unique Victorian downtown area, which also contributes to that small town feel. The downtown area has a mixture of retail and coffee shops, restaurants, bars with live music, ice cream shops. You get the idea. The downtown area also has O'Brien Park, which is the setting to many of Parker's community events. The park consists of 10 acres of land and has everything expected in a large community park. Parker is known for having a lot of events and activities. These help to bring the community together and contribute to the overall small town feel. A few include holiday events, free outdoor summer concerts and movies in the park, art shows, wine walks, Parker Day Summer Festivals, Brewfest, and on and on. Parker also is home to the Pace Center, which stands for Parker Arts, Culture, and Events. In addition to housing the town's museum, plays, concerts, musicals, and larger events are held here. Even though Parker does have culture and arts, there is little diversity in its population. As you can see from this graph, almost 80% of the population is white. One thing that Colorado and Parker are serious about is having open green spaces with ample amount of vegetation. For over 26 years, Parker has been named a Tree City USA for its outstanding dedication to urban forestry. Not only does Parker have 900 acres of open space and 250 acres of parklands, but it also has 20 plus miles of walking and biking trails. The red is for the Cherry Creek Trail. This starts in South Parker and goes all the way to Denver. If you're interested in the full parks, trails, and facility map, the link will be in the show description. Parker also has many great neighborhoods and affordable housing. 
Well, that is for the Denver area. Overall, Denver is not a cheap place to live and has a higher cost of living, but many people find it worth it due to the active outdoor lifestyle. Compared to other southern Denver suburbs, Parker has some of the more affordable housing options. You can get a little bit more bang for your buck. In 2022, the median price for a single family home in Parker was $625,000 and condos were $310,000. For comparisons, Lone Tree, Colorado was $890,000. Castle Pines was slightly over a million. Aurora came in at about $530,000. Centennial was $640,000. And Highlands Ranch was at $700,000. I know it seems high. Depending on where you're moving from, you may have sticker shock right now but it may not be as bad as you think. Keep in mind that Colorado has the third lowest property taxes in the nation, which makes a huge difference in your monthly housing expenses. When you get qualified for a home loan, it's based on all the housing expenses, not just the price of the home. So if your property taxes are a third less or a half less of what you used to pay, you're gonna qualify for more of a house. So you may be able to qualify for more than you think, Reach out to me if you would like to get an idea of what your monthly payment would be. Parker has many subdivisions and is still growing. As of 2023, there is still a lot of new construction and I don't see it slowing down anytime soon. As you can see, Parker has many subdivisions. The subdivisions vary in age, styles, amenities, lot sizes, and price points. Most if not all subdivisions have community parks, open green spaces, and trails. This is footage from the Stonegate subdivision. There are quite a few sections within Stonegate, so the sizes of homes, lots, and price points do vary. The average price point as of 2023 is around $630,000. Please note, this much snow is not typical. We've had a lot of snow this year. This footage is from Challenger Park Estates, which also has an average of around $630,000 and the home prices range between $450,000 to $800,000. If you're one that prefers more open space, larger lots, and to be closer to downtown, then Robinson Ranch may be appealing to you. This subdivision is smaller with custom homes, so not as many homes are available for sale, but it may be worth watching and waiting. The average price point in this neighborhood is around 1.2 million. Or you may like the Pinery. It has a mixture of lot sizes and tends to have more trees than Robinson Ranch, but it is further away from town. As you can see, this is an area with a mixture of older and newer homes. There are also multiple sections within the Pinery so there is a lot of variation in price. If you're one that prefers a new construction home or newer community, you're in luck. There's new construction scattered all over Parker and some new home communities. All of the darker wine colored pens are areas that have new construction. Most of the new construction is taking place in South Parker due to the open land. The largest new home community is Trails at Crowfoot. It is far south across 83 from the Pinery subdivision. There are numerous builders in this subdivision. So price points range from 500,000 to 1.7 million. If you prefer a smaller subdivision, there are also other new home communities that are not so large. This is a list of some of the more popular Parker subdivisions. These do range in age, amenities, lot sizes, sizes of homes, and price points. Another thing that Parker has to offer is great public schools. Parker is known to have great schools. Many of the public schools in Parker are ranked between seven and 10, with the average ranking of nine to 10. Parker schools as a whole score above the Colorado average in math and reading. This puts them in the top 20% of Colorado public schools. Worst case scenario is you get a home, you don't like the school the home is zoned to. The great news is Colorado offers open enrollment. This means you can apply 
for your child to attend any public school they want during the open enrollment period. It is first come, it's simple to apply, and once accepted, your child can continue to attend the school, and in the future, siblings can also attend that school. Parker has a lot to offer, and you can get more bang for your buck. The question is, is it right for you? Please reach out to me for any of your real estate needs. I love what I do, I'd love to help you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.